Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we want to talk a little bit about the upcoming Cinnamon desktop updates. Of course, Cinnamon desktop is my favorite desktop environment, mostly because it gives us a good traditional Windows-esque type feel, which is the type of environment I am absolutely the most proficient in. And I have tried all the different desktop environments, and of all of them, I like Cinnamon because it gives us a desktop that is very much like your traditional traditional Windows platform. It has good combination uses of mouse and keyboard. It has an easy to use layout, good desktop icon support, and a lot of other functions that I like to have. In addition, it has some of the more modern elements like syncing online accounts, which I can do to sync my Nextcloud instance to sync contacts, calendars, and things like that directly into the desktop, which can simply appear up on my uh, basic desktop widgets. So the Cinnamon desktop is absolutely my favorite of the desktop environments. And uh, the Linux Mint team, who is responsible for this, released an update a couple of weeks ago. And uh, we're just now getting a chance to uh, do a video about the updates coming in. And I'm actually excited about some of these updates uh, because some of it literally is some of the ways that I have modified my desktop. They're starting to put some of those in. That's totally awesome. So let's go ahead and have a look at the uh, October 2022 monthly newsletter released November 1st. I'm not sure why he releases the October no newsletters on November, et cetera, but uh, hey, whatever. Uh, let's just go ahead and run through this. All right, so uh, f the first thing is there's been some discussion going on with uh, the changing to of the blue uh, the Bluetooth manager, and of course they put in Blue Man. This had a little bit of an issue of sometimes you had uh, two Bluetooth icons showing up on the panel. This is fixed um, because they were basically trying to take one of them out, put another one in because one of them became incompatible with the basic uh, code base, and then they replaced it with Blue Man, which gives you a lot more distro agnostic build so they didn't have to do something different on the Mate and the XFCE versions. Uh, Blue Man is upgraded to 2.3.4, which is going to resolve the two Bluetooth icons showing up on the desktop. Uh, the next thing that they saw resolved is fewer password prompts. If you have done things in Linux Mint, maybe you love it, maybe you hate it, but you had a lot of password prompts for installing software. You go into the software store and it might go ahead and ask you that password every single time you're installing a different application. They went ahead and resolved this. Um, so they made this have less password prompts inside the update manager, inside of the uh, the software store. Not that you don't have to use the password at all. That would be a big security risk. But you basically have to enter it once per session, and then you won't have to enter it multiple times. Uh, code lets you remove applications. So the main menu was reviewed. Password prompts were removed in situations where administrative uh, permissions were not required. Um, they, uh, removing a flat pack, um, uh, removing a flat pack will not require the administrative password. Same goes for simple shortcuts and local applications. Um, these are just things installed locally to the user, not system-wide applications. Uh, Synaptic and the update manager will also ask uh, PX Execute to remember your password so you will not have to enter it every single time you do multiple operations. So those two systems, only one to password per time. Uh, speaking of the update manager, they added flat pack support into the update manager. This is something that was missing and that uh, you'd have to upgrade your flat packs separately through either a terminal command or through the software store, basically, which kind of makes sense that Linux Mint, um, like it didn't make sense. Linux Mint did not solve this a long time ago, being that Flatpak has been so integrated into Linux Mint for a long time. But now in the update manager, you will see the option to have um, the Flatpaks as well. So looking at the image that they have here, let's see if we can see that guy bigger. Uh, the image that we have here, we have these are things from the Linux Mint repository. These are things from the Ubuntu repositories, and these are things from the flat packs. So you can see the uh, version number changes over on the old and the new versions. And then um, you can see from the... Um, flat packs here, you'll see the version numbers next to it, just like before. So now you can upgrade all of your flat packs um, inside of your update manager without having to worry about those not getting updated or updating in other places. So 
any other uh, back end for Flatpak will also be allowed to do it. Uh, the cinnamon corner bar in the left section of the panel, the show desktop was replaced by a separator. So um, this is one of the changes that I have always made. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my desktop right now. So the basic build is going to put where you have these quick launch icons. They actually have a show desktop icon by default, which I move way over here because one of the best things that happened in uh, Windows, I think it was Windows 7, maybe it was Windows Vista, is they put a show desktop button down here at the very bottom corner. And when you just throw the mouse to the bottom, click it, and boom, it minimizes all windows. You see the desktop allows you to quickly work. I've always just taken the applet and dragged it over here. First thing I do in any cinnamon build. But they are adding the exact same thing that Windows put in. And they're putting the corner bar over here and replacing it, um, basically removing it from the uh, from the current bar. So now you'll just see your web browser, your Nemo, and your terminal, in, and uh, you'll see an extra separator between your Linux Mint window. And uh, we do have a uh, new panel for the corner bar. You can show the desktop. You can show desolates on a middle click. You can peek on the desktop at hover or not. Um, that's probably a function I would not personally use because that would really drive me crazy. Um, but uh, you do have the option now. The corner bar is going to be down there like it is on a Windows system with the click action of minimizing all the windows. In this case, it says show the desktop. It's the same function as uh, the current show desktop or middle click for the desklet. So what you see here is the default behavior, and that's exactly what is in the current application that they are replacing. So that is a really cool option. I'm very very pleased to see that they're finally putting that into there and I don't have to manually change that on every build. Uh, that's pretty cool. And if you still want it over there, it is still going to be an applet. You can go ahead and throw it back where it used to be. The uh, corner bar also supports peak to desktop. Okay, whatever, we covered that. Uh, visual changes. So um, one of the things that they're working on right now, again, let me show you my desktop, show you what we're talking about here. Uh, so if you take a uh, click on an icon here on your desktop, you'll see that it will uh, highlight both the folder and the title. And they found that inconsistent with theming. And so what they're going to do now is you would never you don't highlight the f icon and the title. Now it just highlights the title of the icon. Uh, they said it was inconsistent with Nemo's list view and didn't look very nice. And so they got rid of that. And I kind of agree. I, I like this. Uh, I do like what they're doing here. Um, might make it a little bit harder to see which one's there, but nevertheless, it's something I like. I support pretty cool. All right. So Nemo will only highlight file names. The icons won't be dark anymore. That gives the file manager a cleaner look. And icons represent the desktop were flipped vertically. I had no idea what in the world that was talking about, <laughs> to be perfectly candid. I'm trying to stare at this going, what do you mean? I, I don't know. I'll figure it out when, when the new one's released or whatever. Um, the other thing that they added is the right context menu. They have now added an option in your right context menu for display settings. Uh, and so you, there's no longer when you log in, if you have to mess with your display settings, add or remove monitors or weather things, you don't have to go into the into the menu and find the display settings and uh, make those individual changes. They've added the display settings directly to the desktop context menu. That's totally awesome. Next cool thing they can put in, let's see the system monitor when you right click on the panel. That would be totally cool. That's the best function of Windows in my opinion. Uh, is it still on Windows 11? I don't know. Uh, I haven't looked at that in a while. Uh, but those are the things that are coming to Linux Mint in the upcoming uh, future. Thanks again to all, also all the people who are supporting the Linux Mint program, keeping a most amazing um, desktop environment and operating system up there. So there are the updates coming to the Cinnamon desktop. Um, those will probably be rolled into any Arch builds soon. I'll be updating my Endeavor OS sometime soon, so I'll go ahead and 
probably get a chance to see and play around with this a little bit before uh, the next Linux Mint rolls out. But uh, I didn't check the release schedule of when the next Linux Mint's rolling out, but it shouldn't be too long before they start having some beta candidates to start looking at. And these are going to be in the next version of Linux Mint. So thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, we do have uh, the various support pages. We're on Patreon, Subscribestar, and Locals now. If you want to join us in any of those particular places, you can go ahead and do those. And uh, you can find other information at the website at switchtolinux.com, which we are getting the new one launched pretty soon. I'm hoping the end of this month. We are narrowing in on that. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.